This is hype. Look, he's, he's hyped. Like ready to podcast. I know. It's like we had a few weeks off, guys. We're back. Matt and Becca. It's been so long that I don't even remember what episode we're on. 27? I feel like it's 27. Okay, we're gonna say it's 27. We could be wrong. Welcome to episode 27 of the No Regrets podcast. This is special edition post Wadapalooza podcast. We had a couple weeks where we didn't see you guys, and I have to be fully transparent, ghostly transparent. That that like you're a ghost, like you can see right through me because oh. I don't hold anything from you guys. We missed. Last week with the podcast, we were at Wadapalooza. We were almost, we are going to try to do a live podcast. Uh, Gerard was going to help us do that. And then we were so tired on Saturday night. I didn't really know how to set up. I didn't want to be so tired and try to set up YouTube live and run into issues and everything. So I have to play around with that more. But who wants a live podcast? I think that would be pretty interesting. Not that I edit these a whole ton. I mean, I, I all I edit is like our flips back and forth. It from would be the... super cool to do it like that, like immediately post competition, because people are like hungry for the info. Yeah. Um, and the, kind of what we're going to talk about today to have that immediately following the competition, I think would be cool. I just didn't know what I was doing. Okay. And we and <laughs> no, we do we do need to hype doing. it up a little bit so everyone knows like hey at this time yeah. log in to be on live and we'll take your live questions yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Gerard kind of had it somewhat planned out at the before we left and I just didn't know I don't know much about going live but I know there's other th- things to get ready for and I was like do I, I I need other technology or whatnot anyways and then the week before that this is what happened so we're having some awesome brainstorming sessions with awesome people and just between the the team right here of just like how we want to go about continuing to grow our content and making it better for you guys, making it more exciting, doing some fun and different things. I've been talking to a lot of people. I keep saying, I never really imagined myself getting into content creating like this, but it's really something that I enjoy and I have a lot of fun doing. And it's like its own form of art and you can make a lot of it. So. Yeah, and really it's like just documenting doing the fun stuff that you do in life and just kind of sharing that yeah hopefully that's like some inspiration for other people some people get some stuff out of it you are a very entertaining human being i don't know if that's a good thing (laughs) or or a bad thing entertaining alien guys sometimes i don't know if she's a human but sometimes i don't you can be you are quite entertaining so um we want to give you guys some cool stuff There'll probably be some swings and misses. I think we're going to try some. If, if you don't just, miss a few times, yeah, you're not doing it right. You're not pushing cool yourself stuff. hard enough. But we did have a really cool meeting with some friends of, like, how to take this to the next level for you guys and just, just keep growing this side of what we're doing. Uh, we do a lot. We train, compete, coach, content create, and, hey, Go out there and do whatever you want to do. I always say that to you guys. That's how you have the most fun. And when you get into like really chatting with a whole bunch of people and kind of brainstorming, you realize in this day and age that we're in, like there's so many opportunities out there. And if you're not doing what you love, like what's the point that you got to go have fun with it. So that's where we're at with having a few weeks off of the podcast, just brainstorming how we want to take it to the next level. Um, But overall, Today, I was like, we got to shoot a podcast. I miss it. I miss talking to Blitz the folks. Blitz missed it. He knew what we Blitz, were doing. We came Blitz in Blitz missed it. So we're back on it. Episode 27 is going to be all about the Wadapalooza experience of 2024. Wadapalooza is always fun because it's the kickoff of the 2024 season. It's not part of the season for you guys that um, are learning about the CrossFit space or getting into wondering what the competitive season is like, it's considered off season. But being that it's at the beginning of the year, it kind of is a it's great off place. It's off season in that it's not part of the CrossFit. Season. Yeah, the CrossFit Games, see, like the process to go to the CrossFit Games. But it's not off season. And it is kind of a, there's a, I guess, less stress to a lot of the athletes because it's a touch point, but it's not like for all the marbles necessarily. 
But it is a very, it's a, don't get it twisted, it's a very competitive, you have very high level athletes there, so. We got some of the marples this year. It's not like, <laughs> it's not like the off season in the NFL where like none of the I'll starters are, in a second. Well, well, none of the starters are playing, right? None of the starters play in the off season. The starters are playing, it's just kind of like for fun, so. I'm not for, it's still competitive, it's just a little different. But. There's... I just don't want to discount the level of competition that it is. I don't think... If you're a newbie to this stuff. But anyway. It's a great checkpoint and a good little, a nice little ramp up to what we're going to start doing come the season. Like you said, athletes are more relaxed over there. Miami's such a fun place to be in. The competition, the way it rolls, is such a fun atmosphere just because um, there's some unique events and there's individuals competing. And you can also, nowadays, compete team. You can choose to do one or the other or both. And it is so awesome just because, especially in the position that we were coming off of last year, I hadn't competed since end of may what are you laughing about because i was thinking about your, last time what's your face doing <laughs> trying to you? look at the camera more and talk to the people because you say i never look at the camera well just okay smiling pause why you, you talk he was getting mad because i was making the thumbnail and he's always like the thumbnail was always me looking at you and me doing something like ridiculous because fun fact i do ridiculous things with my hands all the time and then you're always like looking at me so i was like look at the people hi people Resume. Where was I? Wadapalooza is fun. See, now, now I lost I'm my train of thought. I'm sorry. Okay. Just jump into it. I'm trying to People remember like to what go I was there, doing. Because there's People, cool stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff, but... Um, edit, oh! Edit, we're editing this part. No, 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 no. See, this is why you can't... <laughs> what's wrong with Becca episode? Please rewind to that and what we think is wrong with me and how I can't remember things. Um, no, but all of the elites are there. A, a major part of the uh, competitive field that you're going to be competing with in season is there. And this is where I was at. Being that I hadn't competed since May of last year, it's so scary going into the competition. I'm like, we've been working hard. We've been getting strong. I don't know where we're at. This is, we're about to see where we're at. And as much as we, everybody likes to think the elites like got it all together and everything. And that, I mean, when you compete, you do gain experience. You get more confident. You learn how to deal with nerves. But everybody is always on edge as far as like, Let's see where we're at. And Wadapalooza usually brings that around because you got a lot of the girls that you're going to compete with across the season there, and you get to see how you kind of stack up against them. And we're in, we've talked about it before, we're in such a unique spot of I'm not a part of any camps or anything. It's just you and me and Blitz around here trying to figure out how to get fit and how to get strong. Um, so when you're not involved in athlete camps and not around a lot of um, those athletes you see during the season, it can be a little bit crazy of just being like, we got to go do the fitness that we've been doing and see where it, where we end up. But like I was saying, we did take some of the marples this year and we did get a top 10 finish, which, yeah! I did I say hyped. going into Wadapalooza that if we looking at the events and we if we competed to the best of our ability hit everything the way we wanted to I knew top 10 was going to be doable but I also said I was going to be pretty stoked if we finished top 10 so part of the thing that I'm learning to do is learn how to celebrate appropriately because I don't like to do that I'm always like oh gosh it's on to the next thing now but you do have to celebrate and give yourself a high five pat on the back kind of thing like a little, you got to give yourself that carrot so you come back into the gym, like, it, it kind of reinforces or gives you confidence in the training's working when you have, when you finish well, and um, you don't want to let it get to your head or be like, oh, I'm, you know, we, we're both very aware of it was five our events. programming strength. It's only five events, so I reminded you that when we finished, too, yeah. a little bit, like, Yeah, he keeps me in, in check, guys. In check. He goes, it was just only five, five events. events. I'm like, we, we know that sometimes programming we're, we're, we want to get to that point to where it doesn't matter the programming, we're going to be 
qualifying, doing the things we need to do, but we know that that all comes into account. So it was really cool because we had some awesome moments, some big growth moments in some of the events, but also like some, some good, uh, <laughs> what? I'm just over here trying to teach myself how to celebrate, and you're like, it's only five events. <laughs> no, but I think the way you celebrate is different than others. And what I mean is that carrot that makes you hungry for more training and, hey, we're on the right path. Right? It's like hitting that. You, you reached a goal, and it like makes you hungry for more. Do you believe me when I always, now when I say I feel like I'm getting fat, and there was one event where I was lacking <sighs> fitness, and I go, oh my gosh, fitness. it's because I'm so fat now. I'm out of shape. We'll get to that event here in a second. But yes, um, I think I talked about this before we get into the events. I talked about this on a move mindset video one time. I can't remember which one it was, but how after qualifying for the games, it was such a weird experience just because you're celebrating it and you're like, this is a dream come true. This is everything that you train for. But at the same time, it was immediately into thinking, oh gosh, now we got to go train and get ready for this next thing and it was scary it was stressful and it's finding that that right balance of celebrating and riding the momentum and the energy from being successful but also like keeping that focus that you want and not getting relaxed in any which in any area and I know I always err on the side of stressing myself for out sure. More, which I, I feel like most and that's, and, and in the elite moment, athletes would do. In that. the moment of competition, that's one thing I always try to remind you is like you work six months at a time to have this opportunity. Like, look at this event. Look where we're at. This is fun. Like, go let it rip. Trust your trust your fitness. Trust all the hard work you put in, and and, and kind of like be in the moment this and was enjoy it. So the most I don't because you work so hard for those moments I and you know, don't get a ton. yeah and especially in a sport like this where it's just training's grueling. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun. And like I said, you guys get to see it on the vlog, probably the most relaxed I had ever been at a competition, which brought great results. So hopefully I can use that in future competitions and not work myself up so much because I've definitely done that in the past. We'll get to it event by event. But first, we did take resin out to Wadapalooza and... We had it ready to go each day. I was, I felt like I had water, resin, Gatorade, all this, all this other stuff, fluids going in. And I'm getting better at eating during competition too and staying hydrated thanks to resin. Were you proud of my in-betweenness of, or it still could be better? I think we still have room for growth. Jeez. Like we, I said, there was some stuff I want to play around with on Saturday training. Yes, we do what need you to do eat that. in between. And getting that, I mean, it's definitely an improvement, but I think we can get it a little bit more on point. This podcast is brought to you by Resin. <laughs> you guys, Resin is changing the game when it comes to hydration. Now we got caffeine. It's the easiest way to get my attention. You know me. I'm always caffeinated. That's how we get things done. They have their product, Endure, which is not just another electrolyte drink mix, but a complete pre-workout that ensures that you get the most out of every serving. Each box of resin Endure comes with 15 stick powder packets that you'll add to 12 to 20 ounces of water. Shake it up and enjoy 30 minutes prior to your activity, competition, whatever you're doing that day. Maybe it's just work and you need a little bit of extra hype. You've got to take the resin and go. Here's what's in each resin endure package. You guys know Matt is like the king, the, of, the king of opposite hand, opposite foot. You can like kick yourself in the face. It's impressive. Here's what's in each resin endure packet. 150 milligrams of natural caffeine plus 250 milligrams of L-theanine, 780 milligrams of electrolytes, 1,250 milligrams of coconut water powder plus 750 milligrams of beetroot powder, three to four grams of organic cane sugar and natural flavorings. We got blue raspberry, we got peach mango, and we got watermelon. I wonder what other things are gonna come from resin soon. I know they're growing as a small company, but doing awesomely big things. Be sure to check out GoResin.com to shop Endure and other bundles these guys got for us. That's G-O-R-E-S-N.com and use my code BigBecca to save 10% on your order. 
because there we go. Here we go. Wadapalooza, event one, the lift. It is always so nerve wracking starting on a lift. We did what we need to do though. Go ahead. Coach one. Go ahead. Coach one. Explain the event. The event was one snatch from the ground, one hang snatch. You had a 90 second window, or excuse me, a 45 second window to hit your lift, and then any overhead squats were the tiebreaker in weight. Mm -hmm. So you had 45 seconds to make an attempt, then you had 45 seconds to rest while the next group went, and then you had 45 seconds again to make your second attempt. You only had two attempts. So it was a very you had high to be strategic. stress, you had to be high strategic. strategy, um, just high execution needed event. There wasn't a lot of room for error there. I think any time, I was trying to think of this. I mean, if you guys, most of you guys watching are CrossFit fans and know how all of this stuff rolls. But if you're not and you're getting into this, there's usually some big lifting event. And I was talking to some folks that the majority, if not all of the competitions that I've done have always been just you and mainly just an Olympic lift there's been like one or two times, like this time included, I've competed like a little complex. We've done it like a complex at semifinals and everything. Um, but the majority of the time you get three good attempts, three good go arounds. And when you have that third attempt, it's bank something, bank something moderate to moderate challenging, but not truly maximal. Then depending on how that goes, you kind of go for the big heavy weight. And depending on how that goes, whether you make or miss it, you use that third attempt to, to do something depending on how that second one went. This competition gave us everything to stress you out. They made it a snatch. The snatch is probably the most stressful lift for at least to go and compete, I think. And then, just because it's the most complex and the most technical, they gave you only two attempts. So that means you have to be sh so strategic and probably start could, a little bit heavier. You could than make you as won. many attempts as you wanted in the forty-five seconds. That was seconds. the good thing. So if you missed, there were some people that missed, Whew. and then they were able to get in, get it in. Um, so you had a, but that window is so short. Like and it you're still at a, makes me nervous. You're at a weight that's the, to be try to be competitive or score that it's not just a light. You can't just do a light weight. And plus, you want to have a weight that's like enough so you can hit build to in the second attempt. You can't, so you don't have to make such a huge jump. So it's very strategic. And it was the very first event of the competition where you already have all the nerves ramped up and you just got to go out there and like spit them all out on the floor. And at Wadapalooza, that stage is so small, it's like really intimate because the crowd looks like it's right there in front of you. There's only a handful of athletes on the floor with you. So you're not getting away with anything. Someone's watching you, people are watching you. So starting from just getting into the warm up. We had a really, really good warm up. And trust me, we've been through enough competitions where I'm just a mess warming up for the max lifts. Like, so dramatic. You're a mess on most, most snatch days in training. That's true, too. The thing is, I like to snatch. It's just, it's such a technical lift. And sometimes my, I like to go heavier than I'm supposed to go kind of situation gets in the way and of that your, your coach's brain gets in the way of it sometimes. yes i will do a lift watch a video and, and try, try to analyze it change just, everything yeah. at once and but the warm-up in the back went really really well and overall guys the story of wadapalooza just when you're doing a big competition like that and it's not necessarily sanctioned and it there's a parts of it that are organized and unorganized, but also we were dealing with the weather. So in the warm up area in the back, we we're trying to find barbells. Like there was some short, short barbells out that were not what we typically lift with on the floor. There was only like a couple of actual women's barbells out there. Uh, so we were trying to share with other athletes and get our time in the warm up area done. But overall, we had a really, really solid warm up. And going into Wadapalooza, I kept in, I'd always tell you guys, visualize, 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 visualize good lifts. And I was like, I'm gonna start at 155. And that's already a big lift for me. 
At semifinals, we did the runner and we opened at 150. You remember that? We opened at 150. I was like, I'm going to open at 145. You always tack on five pounds for me, and it's annoying. But we did really good in the warm up area, and I was nailing 155, like, no, like really good. And I was like, great. And then he's like, I want you to start at 160. Well, I planted that seed a day or two earlier. Yeah. And you were like, no. Shut it no, down really no, fast. No. So yeah. the seed was planted, and I knew she would come around, but I thought she would. What? <laughs> yeah. You didn't know. The only reason I went up to that 160 was because of how good the warm up reps felt. And I wasn't like sore. I was or right again. Yet. Okay. You was right. Um, but yeah. I knew just from practicing in the gym, I would have been happy making 165 out on the floor. But then when we jumped from 160, you said you wanted to give me the opportunity to possibly hit 170 because I hit a 170 hang snatch, not the complex in here, but just a 170 hang snatch. And guys, adrenaline is such a gift. I think that's honestly one of the reasons I love competing. I think if you compete at a high level, you are a bit of an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. It's so, such a uncomfortable feeling going out on the floor, especially on a first event like that. But I've just been telling myself like the payoff of it. Don't mess with the mic, I'm, no. I'm good. I'm no. Good. The payoff of doing an event like that is what makes it so magical and makes you keep wanting that that feeling more like in that moment i had some hard training days over just just off season and everything just asking myself why i want to do this and keep competing and everything and i think everyone goes through that but it's for those moments of just like that's what we want that's the best feeling ever of making a lift uh, sticking both sets. We open at 160, jump to 170. And man, it is like a war zone up there when you see barbells coming down out the corner of your eye like people were missing left and right. And I was like, just... <sighs> but yeah, yeah, really good I, I would say there. there's a couple of reasons behind like, me pushing you. It was like, as a coach, you get the way that we had planned for that lift and your training coming up to it, I was really confident in some of the lifts that we did some of the ways that we trained it and seeing you make all of those lifts. But also like it was the first lift, it was the first event of the competition. You're coming off of a few days of rest, which you don't normally, even in here training, you're, you're a lot of times training on, you're Soreness. not training on like two to three days of, or a couple of days off, right? So I knew that I was confident in you're, you've been there, you've done that and getting that little bit of adrenaline uh, to help you lift that, that bar. And then also too, it's, it's partly strategic um, not to give, I guess this is a little bit of a, a secret, but like... You get secrets on this podcast. But you if you listen, secrets. you get secrets. But like, I knew there was going to be a lot more people... Opening it. At 155 or 165 or trying to, or hitting once or going from 165 to 175. Just getting in those little odd little bits, if you can make the push one way or a little bit another, it can help you get four or five spots. Right, um, which is huge when in, in any competition. So, just trying to be on that little bit of an odd, odder. Less people are going to be on the 160s and 170s because you don't normally train that way mm -hmm. as often, um, or it's just a natural thing. That I thought it was just a strategic play in that too. That it's also my first time lifting with reds on the bar. That yes. was scary, loading up the reds yes. and doing the and, math off of the reds. And I will say this is the coolest. Thing. I've been telling members at our gym. Because even as CrossFitters, it's hard to like, maybe you don't see this or if you haven't competed at this level, these athletes, like they don't touch a barbell for 20 to 25 minutes and then have to go execute that barbell at a heavy lift for them, from, especially in this two attempt type scenario. That is so impressive and so challenging. Like I would encourage anyone, go try that in your gym. Build up to what you're going to open it with at something, and then wait 20 minutes. You can move around, you can walk, you can jump, you can do whatever you want, but, but don't touch the barbell touch the for 20 minutes. Yeah. Then go on, load it, and then try to hit the weight. They like, told super, us there was very, platforms. very impressive. There was a platform right there if we wanted to get a lift in, but it was like wet and rainy. They and tried we ran, to do some we things ran like out of time, and no one got to touch the barbell but before. My we point went is, out is there. there's tons of competitions where that's 
that happens. Yeah, you just gotta trust all of your reps you put yes, in. Yes, very impressive training. for all the all the all the athletes that that do that and perform well. It's super makes those numbers even bigger and better. Yep. But that was fun. That's how we got the ball rolling. And when you catch that momentum right off the beginning in a competition, you just try to hang on to it and keep the, that momentum going. So that was event one. We ended up with a 170 snatch complex, a few overhead squats. Six. Put us in, six overhead squats put us in the mix of sitting around, I think, 26th in the event or something, somewhere around there, which – for if you know my history with being in the max lifts and everything is usually towards the bottom of the pack but i was super happy with that and i knew if we were sitting in those 20s i was going to be stoked and that gave us a good chance for the rest of the weekend to keep climbing up but after that if you ran into me and heard me say anything i was like let's go do some fitness now i was like i'm so excited com to compete fitness and these hard workouts and be left on your back so moving into event two we had weather issues um, if you follow Wadapalooza at all they had a version written out that was very much grip intensive on barbells on pull-up bars of these two couplets which they changed um, just because it was a little bit drizzly and rain was off and on that day so the event ended up being it wasn't a little bit it was wet it was very wet. Not during that event, but well, event three. Well, not like raining, but the floor was wet. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Which is wet. a little bit just nerve-wracking. But the event ended up being uh, 30, 20, 10 bar dips and deadlifts at 125. And then moving into the next couplet, it was 15, 10, 5 front squats with the same barbell and then 30, 20 10 bar facing burpees in between a little bit confusing to hear when you say it like that but two couplets back to back and overall what did you think we really i really liked the original event that had bar muscle ups i think uh, it would have been i like both of those events obviously for you i i kind of would have i kind of i liked the first event just how it was programmed and everything and would have loved to see you do that and compete that because I think people would have been surprised at how you cycled that barbell yeah, and the shoulder cool. to overhead and the hang power cleans. Just it would have shown progress there and kind of given us a benchmark of how much we've grown and some of that stuff. Uh, I still think it would have been a really good finish for you. It still had all the dips that was like a big part of that and how those shoulder to overhead would have felt after some dips. Um, so. Either way, I don't think the that effect, me personally, I know some folks didn't like the new version as much as the old version, but that always happens if they have variations. But I don't think that really played a big factor into my placement personally. It just would have been really interesting to see it um, played out. I think I'm just still really excited. There's lots of things that we've been working on that I hope we get a chance to show this year that yeah. this event this new version of the event showed some of our fitness that we're really good at, but um, also. I mean, like, obviously, front squat, squatting, like that we didn't, I felt like, didn't see in semifinals at all, any kind of squat volume. Yeah. It was nice to get that because that's something that you're very, very good at. So. Yeah. Um, um, so that was super fun. The. Folks were, I know I wasn't the only one saying this, actually, being a much smaller athlete, the bars that we had were very, very wide. Um, and we have some dip bar attachments in here that we train some narrower, some wider ones, but these were wide and that was a lot of dynamic reps, reps um, just trying to really kip those things hard. But man, I still feel my shoulders a week later, <laughs> still feel my shoulders. They got torn up from that event. And I was really, I felt really good about myself after you said I was burping so slow. I was like, excuse me. He was like, I knew that event was hard when you looked that slow on the burpees. It was everyone. <laughs> everyone was slow. It's it was very to get, it was hard, hard to get, off the to get yourself you up dips. off of the ground after you did 60 of I those meant that dips. in all, with all due respect. Like when you see, <laughs> when you see the athletes and you want to yell to go faster and it's that level of athlete, just realize how difficult that work is that they're yeah. doing. Yeah, do a, a, a combi a workout with, with a bunch of dips and then go do some burpees after it'll it'll surprise you and how hard it is to get yourself up off of the ground. But that was a super fun one. Um, I remember just, it's when you have a, 
a, a field of just 20 lanes out there, you really can't see what's going on. Like I, you can kind of listen to announcers and everything, but they they have trouble keeping up with everyone too. And we were towards like the side of the lanes and everything. And I knew I was somewhere in the mix towards the top, but it was really, really hard to tell. So when we got done and that caught our breath after that event, I was like, where was I at? And it turned out to be ended up third, third on yeah. that event. So top three on that. Uh, so that was kept the momentum going that was a super fun one although we were supposed to like walk and traverse the the bars i'm sad we didn't get to do that that looked fun next time cool that was event two cool. event three the rainy event this is where you got to go see the pictures from this event rip to all the wadapalooza equipment though I don't think they're they're going to be able to use any of that equipment anymore. Um, they did have to change kipping pull-ups in this event to strict pull-ups, and then we were using a lighter dumbbell than originally planned. But during this event, it was drizzling before when the heat Shorter before box. before us were was going, and then it just started pouring on us. Shorter box as well. Shorter box. Um, so this was the one. I'm sad we didn't get to see the original version play out once again because I've never done a competition workout like this where we had a chipper set up and you had three minutes to get as far as you can, reset, five minutes to get as far as you can, and then complete the whole chipper for time. And um, it started off on the row, went to wall balls, went to strict pull-ups, box jump overs, and then dumbbell snatches. This is the, the new version of this with the strict pull-ups. I don't think played out as well as the original would have for us just because the technique and endurance of butterfly kipping pull-ups is something I'm really good at. And although I'm really good at strict too, I think it just changed the workout just a hair to where... Well, there's two points on that. First, I'll say your strict were like the most legit strict that were out there. And like... We, he says that we've in talked a, about in a learning how way. to like trying to find <laughs> a way to ride lines sometimes or knowing exactly what the standard is it's kind of hard when you don't train that um, but I feel like that may have hurt you a little bit and then on but the I looked good yeah <laughs> go back and look at it or we can post it we need to pull your mom's video off of her Facebook she had like 10 people watching on her Facebook feed I should have um, but you can see it there but it's the combination not only of, of that, but also your efficiency on the chest of bars. There's more reps. So there's more reps you can, we were planning to easily get through all 35 on the first round purposely. Yeah. We had a good strategy going into that, getting all the easy reps we can in those chest of bars early on. So, um, and your cycle speed is just really fast on those as well. So in some ways, like we said, for the AMRAP portion or the first scored portion of the three and the five minutes, I think you would have done actually a little better with the chest of bar in there than, than you did with the strict. Yeah. But on the flip side, as we'll get to, you would have, I feel like you would have been top five in that. Um, but with the 70 pound dumbbell, instead of being 15th on yeah, the full final time one i think you'd have been in down. the 20s somewhere so yeah um, just because I, so and obviously I was excited you never know how that's that all going to play out though. but i i i think that i think overall it's important that they keep things safe it's hard to make those changes on the fly and it's kind of cool to see someone try to go for doing strict pull-ups or trying a different movement that is there's a little bit of risk to it because it's hard to judge and everything the way that more of those movements can get into competition as trying it and learning yeah. from it and all that sort of stuff. So in that way, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. So. it. I enjoyed the, the changes and although it didn't, maybe it didn't play The biggest out. thing is they're trying to make an attempt. They're doing the best they can to keep the workout as close as it could be to its original purpose. Unlike some people yeah. and some events. Instead of just totally scrapping certain things. So you guys know what I'm I talking about. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. So that was, yeah. Um, but there's not many times. So I did wall balls yesterday, and I was like, wow, these feel so much better than throwing a soggy, wet ball 
um, with rain pouring in your eyes. Uh, I was really enjoying my 10 foot wall balls in here versus the slippery med ball in the rain. Uh, but hey, that's an experience you don't get a, a whole ton is working out hard in the rain next to other awesome athletes. So that was what? I was gonna say, you can share, do you share what you told me after the event. I don't know what I said. Just like you didn't, you feel like you're un deconditioned. Oh, yeah. That was the event I was talking about where we've been doing so much strength work. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm getting fat. I'm out of shape. And that was one where I was gassed. And usually it's more like. I think it was more the recovery from the first. I think, I think it was that too. And I know I wasn't the only one feeling those dips, but I talked to some people that weren't, that are just. I don't know what it is. There's a part where, you know how when you talk about, you don't like to program AMRAPs in competition because there's a chance one athlete does like a whole ton more work than yeah. the rest of the field. It, it's not like that, but it's, I think I got really, really sore from that second event because I was able to keep the intensity up like much higher than some other athletes. Yeah. And they're probably got sore. I mean, I was pretty You're much You're doing bigger sets on the dips. That. You're doing bigger sets on the dips, which makes a bigger dip. Like, it's but hey, I'll take the placement for yeah. it. <laughs> but that's what I was like kind of Some getting people at. are managing that portion of the workout more. Yeah. yeah. I got really, really sore from that. But yeah, I think I was And feeling, to be fair, that's something to think about. Like we do dips a lot in accessory work. We do some, some workouts with ring dips, but not 60 fast like that. Yeah. No. Um, a lot of the times it's it's accessory work or tempo work or strength work um, to support like ring muscle ups. So. I felt fat. I was gassed, and, winded. And just the wider position too. Yeah. We've been working so much on your press out and lockout that we've been doing lots of more narrow grip, like benching, benching with the Swiss bar, doing stuff to like really Strengthening yeah. the triceps that that was I mean, like it's just a different so stimulus the that we had to get a stretch lot I was I was telling people this week uh, because people were doing GHDs this week and they were asking me if I was still sore from Wadapalooza and I was like yeah my shoulders are still wrecked and the sh the flexion that you get on is that flexion or is that ex extension. extension the extension that you get from the GHD plus the actual the sit up is what makes you so sore that's what I felt on so, a dip like that you get oh, such eccentric. a big you mean yeah, yeah. The stretch and the eccentric yeah. yeah and that big stretch you get on those ring dips plus the actual push and the actual rep of it oh, I'm still feeling it so anyways I was feeling that on event three we ended up with a 10th on the AMRAP portion of it and then a 15th on the four time getting through the chipper, which balanced out to be, I mean, it paid to be a little bit more consistent when the points laid out like that. So left, left us in a decent spot going into the second day. Went home, ate my rotisserie chicken and my mashed potatoes and what else did I eat? A lot of gummies. Is that what all I ate? Yeah, I have the same competition Food just choco because cho lots yeah. of choco chimps just because we know that that's what works don't change it and then we'll save the pizza and other things for for after the competition day two you were finishing you were fin you were in seventh at the end of day one okay which was exciting that was super exciting but there is but we knew the swim the was swim coming. was coming up and that is if you guys keep up with my Instagram story you will know that I posted a video about it, talking about how it went well. We're very proud of it, but it is a 28th place finish for us, which doesn't look good on the leaderboard. But this is one of those moments where, guys, these are the hardest things to do in competition especially, but just in life in general, is learn how to stay in your lane and understand what a win is for you and understand like how to approach a situation that may not be the most fun, the most like in your wheelhouse situation. Um, but I knew there was going into this event, if there was one thing I wanted to do at Wadapalooza, it was prove that my swimming days at LA Fitness have been paying off and I'm comfortable in the water. And cause I know I just, 
I've been doing so much swimming and enjoy it enough in the pool to where I'm like, I, I can do this. Like I'm good at it. It's just the year before was stuck in my head where I jumped in the water. I had this panic freak out moment where I couldn't get my breathing on track. I was like, there's one thing I want to do. I want to settle into my swim and show that I am comfortable in the water. It's just open water swimming like we talk about is just something something different. You're having a spot, the water was was a little bit rougher. You get a lot of salt water in your mouth every now and then. It's very salty. Uh, but overall, yes, we did it. I feel like if I go into a swim of it now, I have so much more confidence to be able to push, like not even just the pace of swimming, but whatever else is with that. DNF last year on the swim. Wow, when you put it that way, it sounds horrible. I just got time capped on the workout, okay. Did I didn't finish. DNF, that means that sounds like I quit. Did I just got finish. time capped. Okay. Yeah, you got a score, I guess. You didn't like quit. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> you did not DNF but a workout. your goal was to finish under the time cap, and you did, which was cool. I didn't even know where I'd be in relation to that time cap. I just wanted to be comfortable in the water. I thought, yeah, I was. It's well, hard to know because you don't know the distances. Exactly, the workout but. was a 40 cal bike into a what we think was like a 250 meter swim. I don't know. 300 somewhere. somewhere around that. Uh, 150 beaded double unders, which is just a little bit more drag on that rope, and then swim again, and then come back to do a 500 meter air run. I got off the bike like second to last just because I was pacing uh, to get ready to get into the water on the swim and that was super uncomfortable. I was like these girls are pushing this bike and getting off super fast. The first person got off the bike, it was like Emily Rolf, and I still had like 15 calories to go. I go, oh, this is horrible. Maybe I pace this way too much, but I was like, you know what? Our goal is to get in that water and swim like a little fishy and we did it. Also caught some people in the water. I was like, kill, kill. Only caught like two people, but it is so hard to get around people in the water. Yeah. And you don't want to risk like getting kicked in the face, but we did it. And yeah. then when you go to turn around the buoy, it completely throws you off. The buoy's like on top of you. I'm like, where, where am I? Where am I? And then I was like, look for the pink buoy. And I was like, I can't find it. It's so hard to turn. We're not built like sharks. I need a shark fin next time. Um, but anyway. No, I, was, I like I, something to take away from that that I think is cool that you mentioned is just learning when to stay in your lane and, and also kind of like the difference between competing and training. We almost looked at that a little bit like you're competing, but it's really like you're competing against Becca from last year and really like kind of using it as a training piece to build off of. Yeah. And, and not, you know. If it would have been a different scenario, we might have risked a little bit more, but it was really just trying to like continue to build on that and on our swimming. And we say this a lot, or I say this a lot to our athletes here, is just like staying in your lane. Just because you see someone else doing it or games athletes doing this, you almost, sometimes you can disrespect all the reps they've put in to just assume that you can go at that pace or skip all the steps, all the squats they did to build that strength or whatever else. You just have to stay patient and put in the work and so like it, it would be ridiculous for you to be like I'm gonna crush the bike and try to go sw and like jump in and swim when the same as some of the other girls that have swam their whole lives or have yeah. swimming backgrounds or whatever and yeah. expect yourself to just be able to do it like yeah they put it's, some, it's building blocks yeah. and so it's just really important in your daily training when you see somebody doing something that's awesome and you want to do is use it as motivation but don't get frustrated or don't immediately try to jump to the things they're doing. Look at the building blocks that they did. Put more time in in the pool. Get more reps of just, you know, whatever strength work, whatever it is, and you can get there. But I think people get frustrated or burned out, or they they kind of fall on their face sometimes because they're trying to hold something that's not sustainable because they haven't done the reps. Yeah. They don't have the time in there, so yeah. it's okay. Obviously, we want to get that into like low twenties or teens next year and. We can do to build, that. Continue to build on it. So. We can do that. It was a major win, just being confident in the water. Um, but overall, it was really fun. The event was held on like a barge. That was something new. That Wadapalooza 
did this year is I backed up the stage to where it was literally floating in the water. I Although totally... they need to do more things out by the bay. Yeah. You should give your how they should have finished that you gave in the Wex the Wex podcast. Man. Yeah, how you should, should listen ended. to the beginning of that podcast. That was pretty funny. Um, the Wex Appeal podcast. Yeah, check that out. She did a live podcast at at Simone, uh, excuse me, Wadapalooza. Yeah. Um, but the funniest thing is that the PFAA, which <laughs> is one of the grace from the PFAA who's like in charge of, or helping like this, all of the, the standards and safety talk of the sport come to the front of the picture and uh, putting more attention to that. So the sport continues to grow in a positive way. But I was sitting there and I was like, you had us on a barge. Why the barge was smaller than you think too. Like you got pretty close to the edge when you were making your way around the into your lane. But I was like, why didn't you just make the finish where we cannonball off of the barge into the water and that's where your time stops? And then Grace from PFA PFAA is just sitting there like I'm probably gonna be kicked off. And I was like, that was that was a funny conversation. But seriously, you had us on a barge. So Why didn't cool. we just like cannonball off safe, of it? Not dive. Yeah, you have cannonball, to cannonball off of it. You get done with your assault run and you're just like, woo, cannonball. Yeah. That would have made the experience even better. Especially if they had like a soundboard and when you did it, you just like bing, like a <laughs> Super Mario. There she goes. <laughs> boing, like sound as you jump off. Just some thoughts, Wadapalooza. I like it. See. Screw safety. <laughs> All right. Um, that was the swimming event. Super proud. If you guys want to check out um, or hear a few more thoughts about that one, just go to my Instagram page. I did a video on that. And thank you guys for all your encouragement leading up to that event. It was super fun. Finally, the finale. Um, this one was pretty much in our, in our wheelhouse with some gymnastics. And your girl likes to lunge. So give me lunges any day. Uh, it was at night under the lights at Flagler, which is always a blast. It's always super loud on that stage and a fun way to wrap up the competition. But the final event was a buy-in of a 90-foot mixed grip lunge, which was one rack kettlebell or kettlebell on your shoulder, one kettlebell overhead, 90 feet of that. Then you had three rounds of two rope climbs. The first one, you started on your butt and you had to climb till you could lock your feet in. The second one was regular. 18 toes to bar, and then a 90-foot handstand walk. As much as I love all the gymnastics and everything, oh, and then you finish with a buyout of 90 feet of lunging again. As much as I love all the gymnastics, and we obviously it is one of our strengths, there's still areas I see where we need to improve. Just like speed of handstand walks. I'm always like more controlled and can go pretty long distances, but it's the speed of which we need to do some you're of these just things. On, when you're slower, you're on your hands longer. Yeah, it's a little bit of just, we've been building so much of my upper body and like pressing strength. I think that's part of just being faster at handstand walks is going to be just improving like my shoulder strength and overhead, extra overhead work, but also just training Dude, just fall faster. Trust it, fall faster. So uh, we finished with a fifth place on this event. It was fun because I knew it would be, There's, I had some strengths in there for me, but overall not happy with that finish. I think there's definitely, like I said, areas where I can do better. I think that, that, that kind of goes into the same as the... There was fatigue. No, not the fatigue, just being a, a little bit fitter. Where we are in the season, we're prioritize strength yeah and we're still crossfitting we're still doing Metcons. we're still staying fit but we're trying to you know put more time and effort on strength so we're like um spending doing more strength work we're doing more strength metcons we're doing uh just we're not primed or as we kind of transition throughout the year and get closer to semifinals, we'll kind of try to be more leaning towards that fit side where I feel like that was the biggest thing, and that was your strength was good on everything. You did really well. You just fat. Your your breaks were that was the difference. Like your breaks. Call between, me fat. And between thirty foot handstand walks. Yeah. To breathe. That was very shouldery. To breathe after was the you issue. had no shoulders. Because you would catch up on the rope climbs and the toes to bar, and then the handstand walks, you would just take a bigger break as you kick down. So. And I think that's more of room for improvement fitness than it is anything else. But yes, 
Well, like we said at the beginning of this, Wadapalooza is kind of like a checkpoint. It's not necessarily where you want to peak. And we went out to show off some gains that we had and also at the same time get on the competition floor and work out those preseason nerves and everything. And that was a very fun way to finish and secure top 10 at Wadapalooza. Yes. And I'll say this, I know you immediately shot it down because you were like, whatever, it doesn't matter. But I think it's just, it's so important for just the sport in general and competitions is all the, <coughs> all the equipment being the same. And obviously you're really good at rope climbs. It didn't really make a difference to you, but if someone else would have been in your lane, it could have made a bigger difference. Obviously the, they had to start from seated, Rebecca's lane. Her foot was an easily a foot and a half to two feet off the, the ground. Rope. The yeah. rope, excuse me, the rope was a, easily a foot and a half off the ground, maybe more. I don't know if some other people saw it. Definitely had there's some the ropes, ropes. There's some ropes that are like touching the ground. Mm -hmm. That little bit of, that's just having to pull a little bit higher to get your feet locked in, which like I said, you're really strong at that, so it didn't make a difference. That's our goal in everything. We're ready for any curveballs, but I just hate to see that look of whether it be a different med ball in a, like a different shaped med ball or diff something, any the, the lane should be yeah. exactly the same and that's an easy, like it was drastic enough, it wasn't like an inch or two. So that would be the only thing that kind of like, it didn't make a difference in your finish, I don't think. I think for some people it could have made a big difference yeah. if you're not strong at the rope climbs, but. Just, just little notes, clean up notes for the sport. Yeah, that's just frustrating. I've been in a competition where People had sandbags, and I was the only one with a D-ball. And if you know that story, that's, like, not cool no, at all. They're not the same. They're not the same. Anyways, leaving it on a happy note is after all of that, I was a little gremlin because I wanted a milkshake, and I could not find one on Friday night. And then come Saturday, we did all the walking around and everything that we did uh, last year to, uh, through Vendor Village. Got to say hi to so many fans, which is always the highlight and the best way to ever wrap up a, a competition trip and everything. Get lots of pictures, see all of your funny meme friends, and see all the other athletes um, doing the same. It's really, really cool. That's the experience of Wadapalooza. But the whole day, I was like, if I don't get this dang milkshake, I will destroy someone. And we finally found a fantastic Oreo milkshake that hit the spot for the I mean, for the you, success. You drank it in like five minutes. Or it less. was that good. It you was were, really, really you good. Were I crushing it. I kind of, I for some reason I associate milkshakes with the end of competition now because I've had the boozy milkshake from the games and then now this one. You got to earn the milkshake though. Remember that. You have to earn it. All right, that's our Wadapalooza recap. Thank you, guys. If you guys were there and saying what's oh, up. Oh, we, we hung out on Saturday. We met lots of cool people. Was it? Yeah, we saw that before. That was fun. So we've met some diehard podcast fans. It was the coolest thing. Guys, when you mention, like, what specific content, like, that you like, like, we got some people saying, obviously, the reels are always a big hit. Some talks about your move mindset. Move mindset was out there. I need to bring those back. Um, yeah, the it, podcast. It really does... That means a lot. It means a lot to her and to me, too. I mean, I'm always proud of her, but, like, it really does mean a lot because sometimes you're just putting this stuff out there and you know some people appreciate it, but you don't know. You're like, am I, is this even worth it? Is anyone listening to this? Yeah. And sometimes it's those mindset talks, too, I think is just you talking to yourself. So it, it really is. is. It's like it a, really is. But I know it's other like a, people feel the same right, way. Right. So. so, but anytime you reach out and you let us know or let her know, it means a lot. It means a lot, and it keeps us like, okay, maybe we can create more, do more to help people, and yeah, the, help, help them on their journey and coaching have video. Fun people and love coaching else. videos. I got yep. the podcast, got move mindset. Obviously, the reels are always a big hit, um, and then obviously just just training videos to keep everyone updated on where we're at, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It really means a lot, and we really love doing all of this and love competing hard, training hard, and um, we miss blitz. We miss Blitz. Shout a out lot. to Coach Eric and Coach Holly who took yeah. care of Blitz. He's for looking us. at us. We're, that's our goal. Take to Blitz. Somehow to, get Blitz to Miami. How do I get him on a plane in a in a seat, <laughs> guys?
someone let me know. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys for listening to our Wadapalooza recap. We'll be back for more fun podcasts. And I got lots of good questions from you guys, so stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you guys later. Peace out. Thank you.